Experience the I Am Melanin Magic difference by going to our website, www.iammelaninmagic.com and purchasing your products today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. And welcome to the channel. You're with Tunisia Ali. Okay, and I am here to guide you through these pipe cleaners. I'll talk a little bit about the pipe cleaners, and then I want to talk a little bit about coloring because it has been a year. No, no, what am I talking about? Fall. Yeah, we're in fall. It's been a year since I talked about struggling to wait another year for coloring my hair. I'm somebody that's had sister locks for 12 or 13 years, and I have colored my hair a lot. And when the color all runs out, it looks like this burnt orange color. And y'all know if you have been with this channel for a while, especially in the beginning, I had like a bright reddish burgundy color in my hair. At, um, at one point when it was uh, more of a brilliant red, I was using um, Vidal Sassoon Runaway Red. And I liked the color, but like a lot of those colors in the store, those permanent, so-called permanent colors, the brilliance of it rinses out after a while. So I found myself doing it very often over a two to three year period. And this is what pipe cleaners will do if you, I digress, but you know, you get it. I'm trying to explain as I talk, if, you, if you're not careful. But as the brilliance of the color wears off, you're left with like this, this, this orangey color, which can be fine if you like that, but I like bright brilliance. And so after talking to the lovely Priscilla a few weeks ago here on the channel, if you all were watching, we talked about henna and she uses Mahindi henna and it's a pre pre preparation sort of a, I'm gonna call it a preparation nightmare because she's committed. She spends a lot of time actually uh, preparing and getting ready for that process. And I'm gonna be uploading that video soon as I get my act together. And so it requires some, um, it requires a lot of time, uh, almost a weekend, like a couple of days, you gotta let it sit and then she keeps it in overnight. So she uses Mahindi. She also recommended um, the Henna Guys, which is the color that I, I purchased. Now, I love this brilliance, right? Um, I want a bright color, but then it's funny because when I was coming down the stairs this morning and I'm looking at it, I'm like, wait a second, this is just a glorified red. This is gonna look like your hair when you put the runaway red in, it's gonna be a brighter red, but it's still a deep red. And you know that what you really want is uh, sort of like a, a reddish burgundy. And that was the color brilliance that I, I got when I used these three colors. Uh, I think I might've mentioned this before to y'all, but I couldn't think of the actual colors. And I purchased a lot of this before moving from Atlanta. I tried not to break my promise, but as you can see, I'm returning to the scene of the crime. It's $4.99 at your standard beauty supply store. And this color is Burgundy Bliss. This one is Crimson 68. Burgundy Bliss is 85, okay? And then there's uh, Paprika. And so I don't know that I used Paprika before, but this will have the same effect. I merged all three of them together to get the color that I wanted. And then I put it on my hair and I left it on doubly as long. If I recall, <laughs> I believe this is what happens when you turn 51. You wake up one day and you just can't see. It happens overnight, sort of like we, when we put on weight. We're having a good time and we wake up and then one day we just can't fit our clothes. <laughs> it's crazy. So it is saying here, cover with, yeah, Plastic cabin process with heat uh, for up to 15 minutes. Now get that now. See, because I'm not one to ever read instructions. I've been using this for years and I've never processed with heat. Go figure. I leave it in for 45 minutes. I don't recall ever processing with heat. Then again, when you turn 51, because it's really 51, 
uh, you're going to find that you forget a lot of things as well, which is good because you don't need to hold that nonsense in your head anyway. We live in a just-in-time world, right? So, okay, why is this in here? Because these two pieces are from two different pieces of my hair, and I was doing this not in the mirror, and I go through and I looked and realized I left two out, so I just used a sponge roller because these are going to merge in with the rest of the hair anyway. I'm going to get to these uh, pipe cleaners and my point about the pipe cleaners and some tips in just a moment. But so I want I, I can either use this from the Hema guys or I can use this Adore. Now, the interesting thing with the Henna guys, which is what made Priscilla, I think, recommend this to me is the color is already what it is. Now, she spends a lot of time researching these companies. She's very particular. She's very, very knowledgeable. And she was saying that this color here could keep me from having to, you know, mix the uh, indigo and mix colors and all that. I could just start out with this. So as I thought about that coming down the stairs this morning versus this, I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go back to the henna guys and get the burgundy and then I'll mix this in the burgundy. So that will give me a similar outcome to this because I don't want deep, deep burgundy to where you can't see it. I want bright burgundy, but I don't want fuchsia and hot pink either. I don't want to look, I don't want to look like a, like a, a pink turtleneck. That's not what I'm talking about, but I'm thinking about that. So now my dilemma is just and I'm going to talk about these, these crazy looking pipe cleaners, y'all, in just a second. Because this is never like what it normally looks like. And now I believe I know why. Because I actually spent time doing this last night. Y'all know I don't like doing anything that takes longer than five minutes. Or three minutes if it's my face. Which is why I just put on, I do my little, y'all know I got these uh, microblading. So I don't have to do anything with these. Except once every six months or something. Once a year, once a year. And then I just put a little concealer under my eyes and I do my my eyelash, my little mascara and some makeup. The lipstick I've been wearing for 20 years. How long have I been? I was two years old. 23. So, all right. <clears throat> I'm thinking between the temporary rinse, because this is a rinse. It is not permanent. So if you're looking for these bright colors to take, you need to already have had some hair dye in that lightens you up a shade. Otherwise, this is only going to show up in the sun and you're not going to be happy. So let me say that again. The rinse is only going to give you the color that you want if your hair has already been lightened. And that's why I decided to start with the rinses because in the past, um, I would spend all of these this time and money. I think I would get four four packs of Vidal Sassoon, which is like 30 bucks. And I would spend all that time. And it's a chemicals and it's very harsh on the hair. And I could feel the difference in my locks. As a matter of fact, since I haven't done it in about three years now, my locks started to get back to their original softness. The dye will make your locks hard to the point to where they'll scratch your back. So they're starting to feel really good again. This got wet in the shower. What a shame. Because now I'm going to have a straight in. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this off. Let me pause this. Hold on. I learned how to use the... Well, I obviously didn't learn how to put the, uh, the little pin back. This is a Samsung Note. And I don't know if this is going to work. I think this is the one that's broke. They're supposed to be sending me another one. I always get refurbished phones. I have multiple phones because of all the channels I have. Yes, it worked. It worked. <laughs> all right, so uh, I got a little situation here. And I got a wet in from getting out of the shower. So I'm just going to cut this pipe cleaner. I'm going to leave about a half of an inch so I can fold that down. That way it doesn't interfere with my style. Nobody can really tell. And in about two hours when it dries, I don't have to have that straight in hanging. I will tell you, as a general rule, you want the pipe cleaners to be tighter in the back. Because that's the part that's going to be rubbing up against your clothes, rubbing up against the back of your chair or your car seat. And 
those are going to go straight faster. When you sleep at night, if you're that person that will style your hair but not sleep with a cap on or put it up at night or whatever, uh, like me, then you're going to want to make sure the back is, the curls at the bottom are really tight. So uh, this, I don't need to have to, I got about, shoot, probably like 15, 20 locks, at least 15, about 13, 14. And, and I don't want to have to have those go straight at the bottom. So back at the ranch, because this is kind of like a chit chat, y'all. I got to talk about this dye stuff because I'm itching to dye. I got to do something. And this weekend may be the weekend. If I decide to do the rinse, this might be the weekend. If I decide to do the henna, today is Wednesday. I can, I'm going to order from henna guys anyway, the burgundy color. Because I definitely am going to mix. I don't need another glorified red. Like this may look beautiful right now. And I don't, that's the other thing. Let me just, I got to stick to the topic. Y'all know how I am. I jump around. This looks dramatically different than this, but this is not going to be the exact color. Um, I still want to mix just a little bit of burgundy in there because this is more like, you know, white people that have really, really red hair, but it's a little bit deeper is what this looks like. This looks like a dark red head, which basically looks auburn. I'm not looking for auburn. All right, I'm not looking for auburn. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to deal with that. So I'm going to order anyway. Hopefully I'll get it in a few days. So if I decide to do the henna over the weekend instead of the rent, I'll have that available to me. Now, what's the, what, what would be the reason why I would be on the fence? Number one is in order for me to put the henna on my hair again, I really need to test an area of my hair. Okay, I had a problem with henna years ago. This has nothing to do with what the lovely Priscilla said. I brought that on myself. I have very, very long hair. All right, well, it wasn't that long. back. Well, in the back, it, in the very back, it might have been here, okay? Uh, only in the center, because my hair always grows like a triangle. It does now, and it, it has before. And that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking about cutting my locks, because it just looks like this in the back. But my hair has always grown in, in that direction. And um, it was about here. And I had, uh, oh gosh, this is, I had, I had henna in my hair. I had been using henna for some years now because all my buddies, all my social circle were all Ethiopian women and Somali women and they use nothing but henna. The men and the women use a lot of henna. If you've seen those ethnic communities, the men have those orange beards because when they turn gray, um, they will put the henna in. Same thing for the women. And the women will repeat that, and sometimes they will use sorrel or hibiscus, um, lemon or coffee, and they continue to, to put it in again and again and again, and you get these rich colors, and they're very beautiful. And I decided to start trying that again because I was doing the rinse, and I just got tired of it bleeding on my clothes. But at that time, I wasn't leaving the rinse in as long. And uh, also, I was wearing my hair out at that time. And that's a long story. I don't want to get into all of that. But the point I'm trying to make is that I had had some uh, experiences with henna even prior to hooking up with that particular community. But clearly, the henna I was using was not pure henna. So the black made my hair look green. It made my hair hard. And this is when I didn't have locks and I didn't like that experience. So I believe I stripped it out. I forget how I stripped it out. I stripped it out. And um, then some years later, again, with this community, I started experimenting with the henna again. And I liked it, but of course the color was deeper. And I, you know, I like, boom. You know, I like bright stuff. My house is all bright. My room is orange. I got colors all over the house. That's just my personality. When I put a plate of food together, it's got to be colorful. I'm very visual. And colors have vibrational frequencies. And so, uh, look at me talking with all this black on today. But anyway, so yeah, um, I just, I was like, okay, I need more, more brightness. But I had been doing all that henna. And I had just done a henna treatment not long before that. And then about two weeks later, this is what you'll run into because my hair is very long. This is not long enough all right for here i have to 
to actually, what I would really like to do is have a pipe cleaner that's about a foot and a half at the very least. That way I could make my wrinklets go down like this. I could actually accentuate my length. Maybe I have to make these. If y'all have any tips, put it on the channel. Matter of fact, there's another tool I want to make. So if you all know, know uh, it, have any leads about how I can find someone to help me make these next two uh, curler type gadgets for our hair, please put it in the comments if you know uh, how folks get their little sister lock tools made or people who design things. I need someone to design a prototype so that I can get this done. It's an idea that I've had for about four years now because y'all know I like my curls a particular way and I can't get exactly like what I want, but this gives me the best of both worlds. But anyway, I could I could use a foot and a half or a two foot one of these. That way I could wrap it a lot looser all the way down and I could have longer ringlets. Now I have to double up in the same area as I go down because this inevitably runs out and I start to run out very quickly. And so if there's about this much hair left, I may use a spring a sponge roller to finish it up. Sometimes I'll take a shorter one or I'll cut one in half and I'll wrap it here. And this gives me uh, the ability to do that. But the issue with that, which I run into, which I ran into yesterday, is that these little ends here will still stick your locks and they can, they can damage your locks. So you have to be careful because even though it may look smooth, it's not as smooth. But this is still better than it is when you, if you do it like this ahead of time, instead of doing it once you get it on your hair, you can at least get it a little smoother. All right, because I need one that's about this long to get the result that I really want. So sometimes I'll do that. Uh, I'll double it up or I'll just use a sponge roller, okay, with a little satin on it. I used to put the end wrappers, but I don't do that that much anymore. All right, so... Um, yeah, y'all, look and see, I kind of jacked this one up. This is the wet one. But anyway, so with the with the color, you see I did that here too. I had to double up in a lot of places. And this will give me a different type of curl, but I, I'm not that concerned. That's still, that'll work, right? So uh, I really, with, the, with um, having used the hair color, I'm going back to the ranch. What happened was I turned, having used the hen, I turned around and put the hair color on top of it. And at that time, I believe I was always using Revlon. Uh, I either used Revlon uh, or I was using L'Oreal. More than likely, sorry, it was L'Oreal. Um, or either the Vidal Sassoon. I had had, for those of you who are thinking about dying and don't want to go to the salon because they go to really put those chemicals in there, lighten your hair up, and that's going to be a lot harsher than the stuff you're going to see on the counter at the um, at the at your local Walmart. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I don't care what they tell you. Oh, I'm using half natural product and half that shit is harsh, okay? And and you might as well just go and take them your little Vidal Sassoon stuff and sit down in the chair and have them to do that or do that on your own. Nine times out of ten, and if I'm if 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 I'm wrong or if I'm ignorant about something. I'll take responsibility for that because I could be. But all the people that I talk to almost, they get their hair colored at the salon by the same people who say, well, it's ha First of all, remember when they came out with those all natural perms back in the day and they were the first thing to take everybody's hair out. They can say all natural dye if it's not henna uh, or something like, you know, beets and lemon juice. You can rest assured that you need to be real careful before you decide to, because when you put that stuff in your locks, you can't take it out, all right? And whatever the results are, when the fallout starts to happen, trust me, it's gonna be heartbreaking. It's going to break your heart. So anyway, here we go again. I turned around and I put dye in it after having had henna in it. Bad decision, but at the time I was ignorant because henna's natural, it can't hurt your hair. Just like, you know, all this other natural stuff that is very concentrated, that you still have to be careful of. I mean, people can die by drinking too much water. I know that sounds crazy, but too much of any good thing is harmful. 
And that is actually, there's a true story of someone who died by drink, drinking too much water. I mean, clearly they had to have too much and put too much uh, on their kidneys and so forth and so on. So, okay, so here we go. Um, we got this, uh, this situation, okay, with the uh, hair and the hair color. So I turned around, I put the hair color in, and within a week, I started noticing excessive shedding. Wasn't paying it too much attention. Okay, da 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 da. And then I believe this is wet, and I'm not cutting this one. I'm gonna have to have another remedy. And it started coming out, y'all. And I already told you the length of my hair. So inevitably, I, it got to the point where when I would do like this, when I would do like this, hair would just come out, and it was coming out from the root, like long pieces. I was mortified. I, each time I pulled it, I had several hairs. And you know, several hairs, it can look like several, but it can be tens and tens of hairs. So, what a shame, right? Look at this, man. I gotta thin this out, cause I'm gonna have to. And I'm cutting these pipe cleaners and I can ill afford to because I haven't been able to find them in over almost two years, y'all these pipe cleaners. I used to get them from uh, Beauty Coliseum. I don't know, they've been out of stock forever. If you know how to get these pipe cleaners, please let me know. I don't want the little thin ones that you do artwork with. They don't have enough stand up. They don't have enough stamina for the, the amount of wrapping I need to be able to do. I'm not looking for those. I'm looking for what they call pipe cleaners, even though I know it's the little art supply stuff. So, hair came all the way out. It kept coming out over a period of two to three weeks, and I was mortified. I couldn't take watching it come out. I was traumatized, so I just cut it. I went like this. It was bad, y'all. And this is coming from someone who had not been having any type of natural hair ever. Okay? So, then it was like trying to style this. It was compact to my hair I would I was trying to twist and then I was like oh my god this is a lot to maintain I decided that I wanted to stay natural though at that point and I was going to just grow them out now at that time the natural hair care revolution wasn't what it is now if I had kept my hair like that I'd probably be so happy now I'm happy with this I probably would have been so happy because it would have been like this and I would have been that girl walking around with that huge afro with those wrinklets in it, having a ball. And by now would probably have been able to tame the beast, tame my hair. But I was out of practice with my hair. You know, you have to teach your hair how to perform and it takes, it can take over a year or so of grooming it a certain way for your hair to begin to respond and lay down or to hold it straight pattern or whatever it is you may be doing. And I wasn't prepared for that because I had been getting relaxers since I was a kid. And I was like, ooh, what's going on? You know, I, I go upstairs and I blow dry my hair and I curl it. And then by the time I get downstairs and to the, to the kitchen, it's starting to draw up already. I was like, oh my God, this is for the birds. Like, this is not going to work. It was too much maintenance for me. And at that time, I was still wearing a scarf most of the time, but it was too much. Not all the time, but... It was too much. And so that's why I decided to get the sister locks. But the henna, at the time, because it was natural, it never crossed my mind that it's still a chemical treatment. Something is natural, but it still has chemical constituencies. It just doesn't have synthetic constituencies. And that's where we sometimes think that just because it's natural, um, you know, it's safe. That's not always the case. It still changes the molecular bonds. It still, it's, uh, it changes the ionic structure of your hair. It coats the hair with something, okay? It does something, okay? I'm not a scientist, but it does something. And uh, as such, I suffered the consequences of that. So just because henna is natural doesn't mean it's not distorted with other ingredients that are synthetic. And just because anything is natural doesn't mean if you don't use it properly that you won't have problems. So here I took 
these chemicals, and let's take black seed, for example. Black seed, uh, in the um, historic tradition, in the Islamic tradition, black seed is considered, it's called, in one way, it's called habat uh, soda, baraka, uh, I forget the, habat uh, soda, or the blessed seed. And it cures everything except death. And it was used for everything. And actually, that's when I came into contact with it and healed my, my throat and ended up not having to have throat surgery. But when I researched the constituency of black seed, it has over 119 different chemical constituencies, just like these essential oils that I work with. Um, and so of the in the black seed, I think it at that time, 19 of them were still not identifiable. But the synergistic properties and impact was just amazing. And so this was, okay, here was another thing I did. I took one of these and I split it. And so this ends up being super thin, which also probably won't produce a great curl, which is why I don't want the flimsy ones from the art store, because watch this. This is going to prove my point. This is going to be very flimsy. It's not erect enough. There's there's not enough stamina. There's not enough, uh, not stamina, uh, backbone. It's not strong enough. So look, look, see how weak that is? You see how weak that is? This is what you're going to have more than likely if you use um, one of those little thin, flimsy ones from the art store versus one of these. You see how much stronger this is? This is very strong. So yeah, so you, you don't really want that because the purpose of having this style is so that it can um, stay for a while. This is two I had to do here. And these are the wrap -a lock tools. And I know a lot of you all will suggest these and that's beautiful and that's fine, but I can't do anything with this. This is shorter than, than the um, pipe cleaner. It's, a, it's a, about an inch shorter than the pipe cleaner. Okay, it's a great tool. This is great if you have short locks, you will love this. If you um, are concerned about these little ends pricking your hair, this is safer. This is a beautiful tool, it's a wonderful tool. But I would give anything for them to lengthen this tool. Man, if they would lengthen this tool, and I think this is the longest one. I can't do anything with anything shorter than this because I can hardly do anything with this. If y'all, if they ever lengthen this tool, man, because I, 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 I could get, I, this could become my new favorite. It's more durable than this one. It's still got that stiffness. It's going to be safer on my hair. I bought three packs of these. I think they were about 25 each. And although that can seem expensive, it's worth it. It would have been more worth it though if I had had a longer one. Oh, I'd be pleased with this. Then I wouldn't be chasing this down. Now, can you combine these? I combined these two, but look at what happens when you get here. I had to loop here and then skip and then continue looping here. That's you're not you're not really gonna want that. So you, you miss a lot of length by doing that. And it, it was just let's see if we can yeah, it's it's it, it it's not conducive to really connecting them in any real way. Man, I wish they would make these longer. Maybe I should try to contact them and see if they could customize and, and make me a longer one because I would love that. I would love it. So anyway, with regard to my hair and the color, after it came out, I was mortified. After I decided I couldn't deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of trying to stay natural, I had forgotten. I've been doing my hair as a kid since I was five years old. And um, I have a lot of cosmetologists in my family. And so I was familiar with hair as a kid. I mean, I used to do my hair all the time and I, I was really creative with, with my hair. My mom had, di didn't really have to do my hair anymore after that, except, you know, not like every night before school, but she would still wash it and relax it. And then on Sundays, if she decided to uh, straighten it and curl it, you know, the hot comb and all that, but it was my hands that were, that were in my hair on a day-to-day -day basis. But so I was familiar with my hair, but after having had relaxers for decades, I was like, man, what the hell is going on? Like, why does my hair keep drawing up like this? I don't know what I was thinking, but it was crazy. So I was like, this is not going to work. 
I don't have that kind of time to be spending all the time. And I would find that even with the twist, by two weeks, I was up the creek and I was not in the habit of going anywhere and having my hair done. I've always been that person. I can count the times before I got sister locks that I was ever at a salon, maybe four or five times in my whole life. And that I only remember one or two, but I'm adding on the extra ones just in case so that I'm not lying. But I um I just wasn't that person. So I'm not going to, wasn't going to, definitely not going to, if, if I'm going to be paying somebody to do my hair, it's going to be because of something I just can't easily do on my own. I was never going to be the type to pay somebody to put some twists in my hair or to pay somebody to style my hair. That's not me. I'm not going to spend my money like that. And plus the couple of times that I had gone, I wasn't impressed. I, I, I If I remember uh, sketchily, I'd be that person leaving somebody who had their hands in my hair and having to go home and do it the way I wanted it done. So what what's the point? They always, when I think of, did I try to go to somebody? I was going to say maybe it was around prime time or something. All I know is there's a, uh, there's a sketchy memory here, but there's a, a vague memory or a sense that I got to come home and do it the way I want it because they wouldn't listen. I think they, there was a time where they were, people want to, uh, remember we went through that time maybe 20, 30 years ago where everybody was doing the finger waves or something uh, and they wanted to put something hard in my head or they wanted to put some gel. I, I wasn't that gel person. So people just wouldn't do, or the lady just wouldn't do what I want her to do. And so I was like, okay, I don't have time for this. Do you want to make me look how you want me to look instead of making me look the way I'm telling you? So I guess it left a bad taste in my mouth. And then also when I went to college, my roommate was always going to the salon. Her mother would come and pick her up from Villanova all the way up on the main line outside of Philly on the weekends or every two or three weeks. And she would go and have the salon, the, the beautician, do her hair with a natural perm or something or other. And it looked beautiful. But while she was going to the to the uh, cosmetologist, I watched her hair fall out. I'm like, why are you paying? And hair is coming out. You're going in there all the time and your hair is still coming out. So I'm just not convinced that everybody needs to be investing in that. So let's see what this style is going to look like. I probably have about mm, maybe 25 of these things in my hair. I've made them pretty thick. I sprayed a lot of body on them this time. I did something different. And I learned something new because normally, y'all, for most of the time, I was just using water, right? So I said, okay, I got this lot of body stuff. I think the time before that, I put a little bit of lot of body, some water, and some of my Iron Melon and Magic oil in a bottle. I shook it up and put it on my hair and did my thing. I do it like that sometimes. But last night, pretty much all I used was Lotta Body. And for all the work I put in, it looks like, I don't want to say crap. I'm not being ungrateful, but it looks like crap. The curls are not tight. And Lotta Body is supposed to give me more of a hole. But looking at this, I get more of a hole when I use water. Yeah, I get more of a hole when I use water. So I have learned that from now on, if I want a tighter curl, I most certainly am going to be, and I see my little bit of plucked chicken here. I just had my retyping. It's never, it's not as bad as it used to be though, y'all. Plucked chicken used to be really bad on me. It's not as bad as it used to be and y'all know why. Y'all know why. Here's another little one. No, that's the one that has to dry. But, um, yeah, y'all. This is, this is, uh, now here is also, and y'all take note because I'm using the new Magical Hair Growth Serum Accelerator. I'm trying to grow in, and this is growing. This right here is starting to grow. I might, could, might be able to lock this. We're gonna keep experimenting. It's only been about six days I've been using it. 
This is a totally different formula, okay? I've been working on it for quite a while. And I'm using it here too, where I have a lot of gray. Now, some of the ingredients are supposed to, and it's helping help with gray, but we're going to see because that's not what this particular formula is for. But we are going to see what happens. I'm going to use it for another two months. And so I got a gray in there, y'all. So it looks light, but the hair is, the idea is to thicken this up to where I can get a lock here. All right. And to thicken this up to where I can get a lock here. All right, now y'all know I have added other locks over the years by picking an area and focusing in on it and really um, giving it nutritive conditioning and all of that stuff. So we're gonna see how this works. All right, we're definitely gonna see how this works. But, okay, so here's what we have. And you can see, if you see this, you can see what I mean about the increased length in the back and my hair kind of growing like this. You see? So my advice would be if you want tighter curls, use water. Use more water, probably three parts water, one part lot of body, or just three parts water, period. And then you can spray it with lot of body if you wanted to, but I don't really recommend that if you want to increase whole. But use more water or do it after you've washed your hair and it's still a little bit more damp. And you'll see me just part the sections, grab some hair, and just put the, the stuff in there. You know, just putting it, grab maybe like 10, 11, 12, and just begin twisting. Okay, you want to take the tool of choice and I'm going to start up here at the top and then you're going to just twist around. Okay, and when you continue to twist, just turn the little part that you leave out. Leave out about a half of an inch, about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, about three quarters. Twist it over and continue. When you get to the end, I don't want to jack my curl up, but when you get all the way to the end, you just twist the end up to hold the hair, and that's the end of it. Uh, you can oil your hair before or after. I oiled mine last time, last night, before. I normally would, last few times I oiled it after, but you can oil it before. I hadn't done too much with my hair, and I had been out walking yesterday about a couple miles, and so my hair got a little sweaty, so I wanted to put some, um, a little bit of antibacterial action on there so I use a little bit of my oil to freshen my scalp just a little bit you could do a, a water spritz as well and I'm working on that y'all it's not has not been easy I'm trying not to put too many other things in there that are not hundred percent natural but I know y'all don't want to be shaking up mixing up the water and the oil you want it to look beautiful and you want it to so there's just a price to pay for that and then we have to put preservatives in there I don't have to worry about that with the essential oil blends, but uh, with anything that contains any water base, you have to do that because it can grow microbes. So that's another uh, particular there. So it's, a, it's taken a lot of trial and error for me to get the exact fragrance, the scent, the consistency, and everything else. Uh, a lot more ingredients too, but I'm working on it. I hope to have a, a really nice something around uh, maybe March for you all to try. For those of you who uh, have contacted me and want it to be a part of the second tier trials, second and third tier trials, I wanna be able to uh, have something for you around spring. So we'll see how that goes. I'm really excited about that, but more excited about this um, Magical Hair Growth Serum Accelerator because it definitely works. Oh, it works, it works. And it'll give those of you who are using the first one something in addition to try or you can rotate them or if there's something about that first one that, that doesn't sit well with you like cayenne is in that one and if that is a little bit too much tingle for you you may find this one uh, more to your liking if that one feels a little bit more uh because remember with all of these less is more with all of my oils you don't need a lot of oil and with those magical hair growth serums you just want to apply it to the scalp 
You don't want to be applying it to your hair. That's not necessary. But you may like the consistency of one over the other one. This one is a little more dry. It's, it's more of a dry oil. But um, it's my hope that because ultimately what you want, even though you may be using these oils to help your hair grow and look good and all of that, Ultimately, what you want is a healthier head of hair long term so that you can minimize the risk associated with this hairstyle. So I want you to think long term. I want you to think that whatever it is you're using on your hair, as you become more consistent with it, it's going to help your hair stay healthy. It's going to feed your follicles. It's going to provide the nutritive base that you need to counter some of the longer term risks, to help you to counter some of the longer term risks with this style. So try not to be in a space of immediate gratification, meaning once the hair starts to grow, you stop using it. Because overall, you need to give your hair a, a stronger foundation. Okay, and like I've told y'all in the past, I believe that's why after all this time, I haven't lost more hair than I have. Uh, especially with the dyeing, the repeated dyeing, especially with uh, the pulling my ends off and, and the picking lint and all of that stuff that I'm OCD about. I think it's because overall my hair is stronger. So if I have to pay another price and give up something else in order to do that, then that's what I'll do. If I have to spend more time washing my hair to make sure I wash all the oils out, in between washes before I start reapplying, then that's what I'll do. If I have to spend more time going through and massaging the oils in my hair and helping to stimulate, that's what I'll do. If I'm not an oil person and it means that I need to put a little something in my scalp to supplement the same way I'll take a vitamin, that's what I'm willing to do because I know long term, dang, all I did was do this. What's going on with my scalp? Because I know long term, it's going to lengthen my hair, my hair uh, abundance journey. And that's just the way I feel. So I love y'all. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video. And I'm going to be talking to you soon. Oh, I didn't realize it was so long. If you're interested in the uh, I Am Melanin Magic hair products, uh, you can go to IamMelaninMagic.com because I Am Melanin Magic and so are you. I love y'all. Have a beautiful day.